Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Well, you know, I'm trying to give the preppers a little advice on being prepared for any of the comms that might be necessary during a grid down. And as you know, I've encouraged them to uh, step out there, get them a tech license, and then study a little bit more and get them a general license so that they can practice on all of the HF bands and the UHF, VHF bands, and then be really prepared for any grid down uh, communications that might be needed. So I wanted to do a little video today to kind of give the preppers a hint on some of the radios I would recommend uh, to the prepper community. You know, I'm not going to talk about handy talkies like what you see up here above me. I've got three of them. Uh, yes, you probably need one uh, UHF, VHF, uh, HT radio like one of these. <clears throat> But, as I've said before, that probably needs to be your second radio, not your first. So, with that said, uh, I want to kind of give you a recommendation on what you need to start looking at, equipment-wise, and uh, studying to get your general at the same time. And some of you may not know about a couple of these sites where used radios are sold uh, virtually every day of the year. So let's uh, switch you over to the screen. And we'll start going through this little review that I've got for you here. So let's get you over here on the screen. And there we go. And where am I right now? I'm on the wrong thing. Let's open this up. All right. So, there is a site called QTH.com. And if you go there, uh, you'll see the classifieds for ham radio equipment. This is where a lot of hams uh, sell their used equipment <clears throat> on the internet. Kind of like a uh, ham radio Craigslist, but nothing but amateur radio equipment on this site. <clears throat> anyway, I picked out a few radios for you to take a look at. And as usual, for VHF, uh, in an emergency situation, I'm actually uh, telling you to buy a two meter radio. And the one I've picked out is the Kenwood. 281A. 281A. Not a very good picture here. Uh, let's kind of open that up. There it is. Right down here. All right. Now this particular radio can put out up to uh, 65 watts. Up to 65 watts. So uh, with that said, 65 watts, that gives you a lot of power to get out. Then the only other question is, uh, can you get your antenna in a fortuitous position uh, up kind of high to where you can reach out there with those 65 watts? All right. Uh, this can be powered from a battery. I uh, know a lot of hams that will power this uh, mobile, or in what's called a man pack. A man pack, it's simply what the uh, GIs carried around uh, and carry around uh, out in the field. It's a backpack, it's got the radio inside there, and it's got a whip antenna sticking up. Uh, and there are a lot of hams that uh, carry these around and kind of show them off at uh, HamFest. And then you have the AMSAT people that uh, will hang these off their shoulder with a little bitty battery pack, okay? Little battery pack that they will also carry on the other shoulder to power the radio. And they'll use an antenna to make satellite communications. 
<clears throat> with this type of radio or with a dual band mobile type radio. Anyway, there are ways to carry it around uh, and, and to monitor with it. Uh, of course, your transmission time will be limited. But uh, I would say uh, if you could set this up like I have with a regular deep cycle battery like what you'd put on a trolling motor, that's the way I've got mine set up in my emergency station, you could probably run for several days just listening and it would depend on how much transmission you were doing. But normally uh, it's more listening than transmitting. Uh, but you can use this radio in a grid down situation on battery power very easily. Anyway, that's my first recommendation is the Kenwood 281A. So now let's kind of broaden your mind a little bit. And I want to show you a shack in a box radio. A shack in a box radio. And there are several of them out there right now and they've been out there for quite some time. Here's one of them and I'm on another site called QTH.com. I, I think I mentioned that earlier. I'm still on that site. I'm just looking around and I've saved about several pages so you can see them. So here's one for sale used, a Yaesu FT-857D or what we call a shack in a box. This radio, let me see if I can get you a little bit, there it is, this radio right here, you can see he's selling it with the meter too, along with it it looks like, and all the appropriate cables that came with the radio. This particular radio will work every HF band, 160 through 6 meters, and VHF, UHF. So with this one radio, uh, you can work every possible band in amateur radio. You can also mod these radios and work uh, MARS, the military uh, civil defense band. And uh, these radios can be modded legally as long as you're a member of MARS. And uh, then you can even talk on the MARS band. Uh, with these radios. So here's the 857D and uh, you can get a meter with it, various cables. Uh, let's see what he wants for it. For this whole rig he wants $650. Now remember it's going to work DHF, UHF, so it's going to be able to work all the repeaters. Regardless, um, 70 centimeter, 2 meters, it'll work all those, plus all the HF bands. So you basically have a sh ham shack in a box uh, with this radio, the 857D. The only negatives I've heard on this radio is the size of the screen. You know, if you have bad eyes like me, uh, you know, you might have trouble seeing the screen. But if you're uh, in your 30s or 20s or 40s, you probably have no trouble whatsoever seeing the screen. A lot of people use this radio uh, portable, by the way. So an, a Yesu 857D Shack in a Box. And their bigger brother, whoop, let me skip one more. The bigger brother, the Yesu 897D, <clears throat> and same thing, a little bit bigger screen, a little bit bigger box, uh, virtually the same thing, a shack in a box. He wants uh, $675 for this. Of course, he's not going to give you a meter like the other fellow did. Meter's probably worth uh, used, uh, let's just say, $89 to $100. That's what that meter is worth. So anyway, here's two of them. There are a bunch of these for sale on QTH by various sellers. So you can look around QTH for an 857D or a 897D. Once you got this radio, you can basically talk on any frequency uh, that 
you want to talk on. Uh, every one of them. Again, if you use it in your ham shack, you're going to have to have a power supply for it. Uh, if you have a battery, a 12 volt battery, you can just connect it up to that battery. So if you put it in a car with the appropriate uh, uh, mobile antenna for working HF and VHF, UHF, then you're going to be able to run it from inside your car. Uh, out in the field portable, you would just probably attach it to a battery, <clears throat> you know, assuming you didn't have uh, a generator. I'm assuming you don't have a generator. You connect it up to a battery and it would work uh, right off that battery. Now there's a third one out there that I would recommend, and that is the ICOM IC7000. I happen to have one of these in my shack, and it was my first radio I ever bought. And again, it works all the HF bands and VHF, UHF. It's got a nice big color screen and uh, works just fine in my shack and for many, many people that own this radio. Little bit higher, you can see this fellow's trying to sell it for eight. 50. I would bet you money that you can find this radio for $800 or less. Uh, in fact, this fella might take $800 for this right now, or he might even take $750 for this radio right now, especially if uh, you were to uh, rig up something not PayPal, where you wouldn't get tagged by some PayPal fees and he wants a U.S. Coastal money order, so you're going to be paying cash. So probably negotiate this price a little bit with him. Now the other place to look for radios, uh, but it's uh, more fluid. QTH is organized. I might as well show you that for a second. QTH is organized by what you're looking to buy. So when you get to the site, you come up here where it says ham radio and click classified ads and here you go and you can see it's very well organized into what type of equipment <clears throat> you're looking for. So if you're looking for a power supply you go into this section right here and there would be power supplies for sale. You can also click the search button up here and type in the uh, you know what you're looking for, like a, I'm looking for a 281A, then you can come up here and type in 281A and hit enter. And here we go with all the 281As for sale. So pretty nice site for kind of finding a price on used equipment for the exact item that you're looking for. Uh, meanwhile, there's QRZ, and this changes by the hour as people post ads. There's no particular order to it. Uh, there are some rules. In other words, when you post a picture, and let me show you one. Here's one right here. When you post a picture of the product, you must also post your call sign in the picture, like this fella did. That way uh, you can contact N4TWX and say, are you actually selling this piece of electronics on QRZ or did somebody uh, <laughs> intercept uh, your call sign and uh, put it up there and it's just a scam? So they require you to post your call sign along with the uh, equipment. And that way you can get directly in touch with the ham radio operator if you're interested in a piece of equipment. Anyway, that's QRZ. Well, here's an 857D. It's, it's on QRZ right now. Let's look at that. And it's an 857D. This guy's looking for 775. So the there's some cheaper ones uh, over on QTH, although he might 
be willing to cut the price. You know, and you could tell him, uh, hey man, there's four of them over there for six fifty. I'll give you six fifty on it, even though he says firm. <laughs> he might take it once he finds that out. Anyway, here is a nice picture of the eight fifty seven. Okay, the eight fifty seven. Yesu. Uh, ham shack in a box. <clears throat> meanwhile, meanwhile, you're going to need some antennas. And for HF, I carry around a in-fed long wire. And of course, you can make these from scratch with just some wire and a box and a torrid that go inside the box. You have to wrap the torrid a special way. Uh, however, there's some commercial versions, and this is a very good one that's on the internet, rated uh, 4.9 out of 5 on eHam Reviews. I've got one of these in the backyard right now, uh, and I've got another one in the emergency tote box uh, out in the garage with all my portable equipment in it. I've got one of these in there. And I've used it many times out in the field. It goes up real fast. All you have to do is throw this wire over a tree limb and you're in business. <clears throat> Connect the coax right here and bring it on into the radio. Now, if you're going to use a long wire, I would also recommend that you uh, find yourself a choke ballon. A choke ballon. All right. Uh, let me see if I can show you the one that uh, this fella sells. Let's see if we can find it. No, I'm not going to be able to find it off of here. I'm sorry. But anyway, just uh, look up choke ballon. You can make one out of coax and a piece of PVC pipe. Say a big five inch piece of PVC. You can make a choke ballon and you actually need one if you're going to run a low wire. Anyway, uh, here's one. So you'd be in business for $74 on all the HF bands with this one piece of wire that's very easy to pack away. What does the inside look like? Well, there's the inside of the box and what it looks like with the big torrid wrapped, wrapped torrid. Again, you can build one of these yourself, and there are plans on the internet for you to do that. Meanwhile, over on uh, uh, the VHF, UHF bands, uh, many, many places, this is just one that shows you how to build a, a dual band J pole. That's what this is called, the J pole. Shows you exactly how to build it out of some copper pipe. And uh, these work very well. Just need to get them up on some kind of a pole or up in a tree some kind of way. You could pull this up in a tree uh, with some non-conductive uh, nylon rope. Pull it up there and it would work just fine. <coughs> Anyway, that's called the J-Pole, and there are plans on the internet for several different types of J-Poles. There are different types. I'm going to show you another type in a minute, but you can build one of these, or you can just step out there and buy one. Here's one being sold by Aero Antennas, and here's what it looks like. Okay, it's got a little clamp on it, So, and here's where you plug in your coax right there. And all you really need to do is uh, get a piece of PVC, uh, clamp it down to this, doesn't weigh very much, raise it up in the air, and you'll be in business uh, with a dual band antenna portable. Uh, there are ways to uh, get a tripod of some kind well, so you can get it up a little high, you know, like over your head. Uh, that that kind of high, and get a pizza pan, and a, uh, attach the uh, threaded bolt that fits 
to uh, most uh, photo tripods uh, you, that's available in any Home Depot, that bolt, and you mount that onto the pizza pan, and then you stick a mag mount on the pizza pan, and you are in business uh, on a dual band mag mount. So there's various ways to do it portable. Uh, I'm not going to get into every kind of way. I've used the pizza pan method. I've used the J-pole that's kind of similar to this. Not really the exact thing, but similar. Uh, and they both work very well. I could hit repeaters a pretty good distance away. Uh, if I just got it up a little bit, let's just say over the top of your head, up at that height. Okay. Anyway, uh, there's the antenna you would buy or one of them, and you can build it, and here's the HF antenna I would recommend for portable because it's so easy to pack, and it goes up very fast. You, you can be set up in 10 minutes, I mean totally from start to finish, uh, using one of those radios I showed you in this antenna, you'd be ready to go. Anyway, let me get you back over here on me. Where am I at? I'm somewhere. There I am. Anyway, I hope the preppers uh, took a notice of this video. Uh, I encourage you to be able to operate these kinds of radios in your preps and not rely on just one of these things. <clears throat> They will disappoint you. You will be disappointed. Okay? Yes, I know you're listening to the FM rock station on them right now. You know, they tune the FM radio channels. Wonderful. But the, in a grid down situation, <laughs> the FM and AM radio stations will be off the air. So, uh, cell towers we be down. So you got to figure out a way to do it on battery power or generator power or something like that uh, and not rely on these. I guarantee you if you're transmitting a lot with one of these in just a very few hours your battery voltage will drop and this sucker right here won't get outside uh, your visual range. It won't it won't transmit a hundred feet after you've been using it for a couple of hours because the voltage has gotten so low it's now putting out a half a watt so uh, consider that when you have one of these and that's all you have okay with that said as I usually do I wish you clear skies hope this helped some of you preppers a little bit and remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. Everybody be good. See y'all later.